Tip number eight, wehen. everyone and happy Wednesday. I hope you're all feeling joy today. So today we're talking about beta reading and how to do it. I am currently in the first stages of writing the first draft of my second novel, Diva of the Damned, and my first novel, Lullaby of the Lilithu, is currently just kind of cooling off. It's in the first round of edits, so I haven't actually gotten to the stage where I'm using beta readers. However, I have had the pleasure of beta reading for a lot of talented authors. So today, I'm sharing with you 10 tips for being a effective and helpful beta reader. You've probably taken some time, if you're a beta reader, to research what makes a good beta reader and how you can be the most useful to your author friends. I've also spent a lot of time doing that research and I just want to let you know what I have learned from my own experience. I did look at some of the other sources to try to make sure that I'm not just regurgitating the same information that you get everywhere else. So hopefully this is some new information for some of you and hopefully this will help you be the best beta reader that you can be. So tip number one, read what you enjoy. It's really important that if you're going to be beta reading for someone, that you make sure that what they have for you is a genre that you like. If you're reading something that you hate or that bores you or that is full of tropes that piss you off, then you're not going to enjoy reading this book. You're not gonna be able to give the kind of responses that a reader of that book would be able to give. This, of course, leads to tip number two, which is to communicate with the author. It's really important that you speak with your author beforehand, during, and after your beta read. Beforehand, you should ask what kind of story it is that you're being asked to read. Ask if there are any questions that the author would like for you to answer. A lot of authors send their beta readers questionnaires after each chapter or each section that they read, but not every author does. So it's really important that you ask so that you're more aware of what to look for while you read. It's also important to let your author know whether or not you're going to be taking more time or even less time to read the section or the book that they gave you so that they're able to readjust their plans if necessary. One of the hardest part about having someone read your work is the waiting for their responses. So the sooner you can get back to your author, the better. And if you're not done reading, it's okay to let your author know that you're just going to need more time. Tip number three, ask questions. It's kind of a similar case with number two where you need to be communicating with your author, but this also goes into your actual beta read. When you're taking notes, try to form as many things as you can in the form of a question. This forces the author to think about what they're writing and think about how it's coming across and less about whether or not you liked it. It also can prevent you from trying to force the author to follow along with your views. So if you're asking more open-ended questions or asking for more of one element than another or asking an author why they made a choice, and that's going to give them a lot more to work with and a lot less feeling like you just hate their work. Tip number four, read the entire section or paragraph before you take any notes. A lot of people, when they're reading and they see something that they don't necessarily like or understand, will immediately write down those notes. Often they think it's because they'll forget something, but read the whole thing because sometimes if you have a question or you're not sure about a character's motivation or you're not sure whether an author meant to use the word that they're using quite often you will find that later on in that paragraph or in that chapter it's been cleared up so it's really important that before you write a bunch of notes or before you at least send those notes off to your author, you read the whole section and if that's cleared up for you, then there's no reason for you to ask that question because it has been cleared up for you. If it hasn't been cleared up for you, it's a good idea to point that out to your author. But sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we think that something has come across clear, that we've made this idea concrete for the reader, but that's just because we know everything already. When you're writing from the point of view of God, it's going to be a little bit harder to see the subtleties that you really want to get across. So if something is working, 
Let your author know, and if it's not working, let them know and try to explain why. Tip number five, reread. Number four was to read the whole section. Number five is to read it again. It's easy to miss things, and it's also easy to see something, have a question about it, read all the way to the end, and still not be 100% sure, but then you read it again, and it comes through. Is that a good thing? I can't say whether that's a good thing on the part of the author, but sometimes it is necessary to reread. If you're doing a thorough beta read and trying to comb through, it's really, really important that you look at it more than just once. Tip number six, remember what the story is about. There are times when beta readers are curious about side characters or about events that are happening or about the world in general that would take entire books to be explained on their own. And it's a good thing that you like these things. It's a really, really good thing and you should let your author know that this is something that interests you, but try to keep in mind what the story that's being told is about. Because some things that you're curious about and some things you wanna know more about aren't important. Sometimes they're just there or they're meant to hint at a larger world or they have to do with what's coming in the sequel. But if the story, the plot that you're reading needs those parts as they are and it would take it would take more to try to explain those things, it would take like another three chapters to really flesh these things out, keep that in mind. Try to remember that you're trying to help an author write the best and best flowing story that they can. And sometimes that means that things that are curious or neat cannot be expounded upon. Tip number seven, keep in mind that every author has their own style. Some things that you might think are an issue are actually just that author's style. And if you're noticing the same issue over and over and over again, then it might not actually be a problem. It might be done on purpose. That said, Write it as a question to your author. Ask if this was done on purpose. Ask if they wanted people to feel a certain way by using this word. Ask whether or not this is a stylistic choice or whether this is an actual typo or whether this is an actual problem. If you find yourself frequently saying things like, I'd use this word instead of this word, then that's really just a preference. That has nothing to do with whether or not it's good. Tell us why if you want to change a word. Let the author know that it's about the flow or you think it will sound a little bit better out loud because authors don't always read their things out loud. But keep in mind that most authors are pretty picky about their word choice and if there is a word that you see used in a specific place that stands out to you, there's a chance that the author did that for a purpose. Again, just ask your author about it. Tip number eight, be clear. So when you're pointing out issues or even things that you like, it's really a good idea to let the author know where. If you're not making annotations right on the manuscript or in a Word document that lets the author know where these issues are, it's a really, really good idea to give them the page number and the context of this issue that you found or this thing that you like so that when they're going back to edit and looking at these issues, it takes less time. Because it can take forever if you're reading a list of issues to flip through your own manuscript to try to find out where they are and make notes that way or to make notes for where you want to fix them. So the best thing to do is just let your author know where it's happening. Tip number nine, be honest. It's important that we're telling the truth, that if you really, really didn't like something and you it made you angry or it made you feel sad or it triggered you, for you to let the author know, even if this author is your friend or family, you're gonna do them a heck of a lot more good if you're telling them the things that they need to fix truthfully, instead of just saying, oh, it's great, I loved everything about it, let them know honestly what needs to be done. That said, do not be mean, do not be cruel. There is a difference in I hated this and I think this could have been done better. And if you say what could have been done better or what you hated, give us detail, give the author a really, 
clear reason for why you didn't like something or as clear as you can possibly get it. And it's okay to say you don't know. We hope that that's not a common thing, but it's totally okay to say that this doesn't sit right with me. I don't feel good about this, but I honestly don't know why. As long as you're telling the author these things and helping the author maybe see what can be done better, you're not just being a jerk about it, then we're going to appreciate everything you have to say. And tip number 10, give positive feedback. Yes, you're reading to find the mistakes and you're reading to critique this work. But it's so, so important to let an author know what you enjoyed as well as what you didn't. In fact, if you can just stuff your negative comments into like a positive comment sandwich, that'll be great. Because authors need to feel good. We need to know that what we're writing isn't completely dreck. And if it is, obviously let us know and let us know why. But if there are things that you like, things that made you smile or laugh or even cry or angry, but in a good way, in that way of, I love this book, this pissed me off because it's, it's so well done or because that guy's a jerk and he's meant to be a jerk and you did that great. Let your author know. Authors are human too, and we have hearts, and we have the desire to be wanted. We want to be liked, and we want our work to be enjoyed, especially authors who are writing to an audience, authors who want a lot of people to enjoy their book. We, we want to know what it is that people do enjoy. We want to know what we're doing right so that we can keep doing that so that we can do it better next time. Do not think that your positive feedback is useless or unwanted because it is just the opposite. What you have to offer, both positive and negative, is what makes you a valuable beta reader. It's what makes you someone that we might come back to more than once because of your feedback. Good beta readers get asked to beta read multiple times. Good beta readers get appreciated in ways that are hard to imagine. I beta read for someone whose book just came out like a month or two ago and my name is on the cover because of something that I said that was positive. I gave a lot of good critique, I think, but there is one thing that I said and she liked it so much that it is permanently on her cover. So make sure that what you're offering is kind and truthful. Make sure that you're remembering that you're talking to another human being, a person who really, really, really wants to get this right. A person who writes a book doesn't do it just for the heck of it. We want to get it right and we want to make it good. And if we succeed in that, we want to know. One bonus tip. If you are reading something that has not been professionally edited already, so probably second or third draft, then try your best to ignore typos. There is a huge likelihood that these will get taken care of down the line as we near the final drafts, but if you're spending a lot of time pointing out typos, then you're probably not taking in the story as much. Of course, if you've read it all the way through and then you reread it and you've put down all of those things and you still want to go back and add typos, I don't think the author is going to hate you for it. But just keep in mind that those are not what we're asking you to look for. Hi everyone, I just realized that I forgot to say bye in this video. I'm not sure how that happened, but I wanted to come back. It's a little bit later and I just wanted to say thank you for coming to my channel this week. Please like, subscribe, and share when you get a chance. And remember always that I love you. Bye.